Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. This is your afternoon update. I'm Stephanie Haney, thanks for joining us here. This is where we bring you the top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app, which if you don't have, you can download that for free in the App Store on an Apple device or in the Google Play Store on an Android device. As we do each afternoon, we've got the most up-to-date numbers for you from the Ohio Department of Health related to COVID-19 here in Ohio. So we'll break down those numbers for you as well as taking a look at the national numbers and the global numbers. So today, before we get into the specific numbers, you can know that new cases are ever so slightly down, but the number of new deaths reported in the last 24 hours is up, as well as the numbers of hospitalizations and ICU admissions, and that's including the active number of hospitalizations and the active number of ICU admissions. And we'll explain what that is when we get to that point here in just a moment. So here are the numbers that we have right now, the total number of COVID-19 cases dating all the way back to March 9th when we first learned about COVID-19 being here in the state of Ohio is now 38,837. There have been 361 new cases reported today. That's down from yesterday when there were 365 new cases reported which was up from Saturday when there were 353 new cases reported. So those numbers are bouncing around a little bit. However, seeing them in the 300s is definitely a good thing because last week we were pretty consistently in the 400s for new cases each day. The total number of deaths now is 2,404 reported COVID-19 deaths. Now keep in mind when we talk about these total numbers, we are talking about the expanded CDC definition. So that includes not only positive tests, but also probable cases of COVID-19. The total number of new deaths reported in the last 24 hours is 27, which is up significantly from Sunday when there were seven new deaths reported. And that's a a relatively no, low number, what we saw on Sunday in terms of new daily deaths reported. The total number of hospitalizations, again dating all the way back to March 9th, is now 6,550 with 53 new hospitalizations reported today. That is also up from Sunday when there were 37 new hospitalizations today. We also get information on the number of people who are currently at this moment hospitalized related to COVID-19. That number as of today is 644. So there were 53 new hospitalizations reported today and there are 16 more active hospitalizations today than there were yesterday. So of course that might be confusing. When we take a look at that, we're looking at not only people who have been newly admitted, but also discharged. So there's been some moving around between the number of people who have been discharged from the hospital as well as newly admitted. And so now that brings us to a total number of 644 active hospitalizations today. So when you account for all the people who have been released and all of the people who have been newly admitted, we see 16 new active hospitalizations today rather than what we saw yesterday when, there were, um, when we saw a decrease in the active hospitalizations. The total number of ICU admissions is now 1,668. That's dating back to March 9th with 11 new ICU admissions today, which is also up from Sunday when we saw seven new ICU admissions. And the number of people who are currently actively reported in the ICU that we know about from the Ohio Department of Health is now 245. So after they've accounted for discharges and new ICU admissions, that's an increase in five people who are actively in the ICU today over what we saw yesterday. Taking a look at the national numbers, the total number of COVID-19 cases across the country now is now 1,950,000 roughly. And the total number of deaths in the U.S. has now topped 110,000. That total number is 110,734. The U.S. is holding pretty steady in terms of the percentage of global known cases and global known deaths. The U.S. accounts for 28% of known COVID-19 cases around the world and 27% of known COVID-19 deaths around the world. These numbers are based on reporting from Johns Hopkins University. So the total number of global COVID-19 cases is now 7,066,000 roughly. And the total number of deaths is now over 400,000 globally. That number is 404,021. 
as we continue to figure out how to deal with stopping the spread of COVID-19, but getting the economy up and running again in the state of Ohio and trying to balance those interests, Lake County restaurants have decided that they do not agree with the way those interests are being balanced at this current time. So eight restaurants have filed a lawsuit against Dr. Amy Acton, the director of Ohio Department of Health and Governor Mike DeWine saying that the guidelines that have been laid out in the Responsible Restart Ohio initiative are not only vague, but also unconstitutional. So the eight restaurants that have filed this lawsuit include Diamondback Bar and Grill in Harry Buffalo, Islander Bar and Grill, Grayton Road Tavern, Park Street Cantina, Bar 30, Frank and Tony's, and Town Hall in Ohio City. So in the court filing, which was filed last Thursday, they say that the regulations laid out by the Ohio Department of Health are vague and un unconstitutional. So the things that they are saying are not permissible. The complaint argues that exposing restaurants and bar owners to strict criminal penalties is unconstitutional and that they're not able to control the conduct of other people. They simply have no reasonable control over the patrons of their restaurant. So some of the regulations that they're taking issue with, including requiring the physical distancing, asking customers to stay home or leave if they are experiencing COVID-19 symptoms. So this is not the first lawsuit that's been filed against Dr. Amy Acton. This is actually the third that we are aware of. There was an initial lawsuit filed against Dr. Acton by gyms and fitness facilities saying that they should be able to reopen as well as amusement parks. Kings Island filed that lawsuit last week related to asking to be able to reopen immediately. And now we have this lawsuit, which we will be waiting for a response from the Ohio Department of Health and Governor Mike DeWine. In national news, Cleveland had a prime spot on John Oliver's last week tonight show. He called out Cleveland police in the most recent episode. This was on Sunday night while he was addressing police brutality. So John Oliver used a clip from an interview with former Cleveland Police Union head Steve Loomis. So in this video, which again is from 2015, Loomis is speaking out a proposal that would require officers to file paperwork anytime they remove the gun from its holster. Loomis said that this kind of a regulation could deter officers because they don't want to do the paperwork that is associated with having to pull your gun from its holster. Now we're ta talking about firing the gun, not even necessarily talking about pointing it out at someone, but talking about removing the gun from the holster. Oliver responded saying that the idea that the risk of paperwork being a deterrent to pulling out your gun rather than the risk of actually killing someone was absolutely terrifying to him. Now, remember, this video came out about six months after the death of Tamir Rice, which is the 12-year-old boy who was shot and killed by a police officer in Cleveland while holding a toy gun. That episode is available online. It's already got 2 million views. The whole episode is 33 minutes long. And if you've been keeping track of the weather, it is getting hot here in Cleveland. Things will be warming up after a slightly colder weekend this weekend. Today we'll be into the 80s, which is nice, but Tuesday and Wednesday is when it's really going to start getting hot around here. It'll be into the 90s on Tuesday, according to our 3 News weather team. And on Wednesday, it will also be up in the 90s. So if you've been waiting for that summer weather, even though it's not quite technically officially summer yet, we are definitely experiencing some of that weather right now here in Cleveland. Also, we want to make you aware of a change to our WKYC app, which again, you can download in the App Store or the Google Play Store, depending on whether you have an Apple or an Android device. We want to see the beautiful places and the things happening around Cleveland right now. So we've launched something called Show Us Your Cleveland. This is a new way for you to share your photos and your videos with us. All you need to do, update your app and then open up the three news app. You're going to scroll down a little bit in your feed. You'll see a section that says show us your Cleveland, submit your photos here. Just click on that and you can send in your photos and we may use them online on our social media accounts on our website. We also may use them on the air and give us your information, of course, so that we can credit you when we share those beautiful photos of how incredible Cleveland is looking this time of year. We definitely can't wait to see everything that you send us. So make sure you update your WKYC app, scroll down in the feed, and then you'll see the show us your Cleveland section. We cannot wait to see what you all have for us. Everyone always takes such beautiful photos, posting and sharing them, and we want to 
share them as well so that more people can see them. This has been your 3 News Now afternoon update for Monday, June 8th. I will be out tomorrow. Someone else will be bringing you your 3 News Now updates tomorrow. I will see you at 5 p.m. on What's New with your daily enter entertainment news breakdown and also the stories that are cooking in Cleveland, the top stories on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Then we'll have more for you in What Matters Most at 6 p.m., on Front Row at 7 p.m., and What's Next at 11 p.m. And we'll see you back here later this week. Everybody, have a great day. I'm Stephanie Haney.